What about dragons? The one question you don't expect to hear in a bedroom. Unless you watch Shadiversity. Which, in my opinion, you should. Jokes aside, though this question has arguably been asked many times in fantasy stories for many different reasons, and while there's more than enough source material to talk about how a dragon and a human could intermingle, we shall not venture there. Today. Instead, we will take a closer look at what reason dragons might have to procreate with humans, elves, orcs, catgirls, or, if this is possible, golems and automatons. And I know what you're thinking. Isn't a dragon, purely speaking from an anatomical standpoint, unable to deliver what it takes to make offspring where it is needed into a woman? Or isn't a man's shortcoming standing in the way of parenthood? And the answer to both of these questions is yes, yes indeed. But there's the spell Polymorph. And this magic can turn natural dragons into biological humans with draconic powers. And a great example for this is the dragon Tyrandolith, that can be seen in the game Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. And with that said, let's get to the figurative and literal meat of this video. And the first reason for why dragons would want human offspring that comes to mind is just good old fashioned love. If the dragon in its human form travels with a group of human adventurers, is experiencing human culture, human food, and human relationships, who's to say that the polymorph spell does not change or expand upon things you might find attractive? Alternatively, fetishes might exist as more than just talismans and runes of protections in a respective fantasy world. So, an honest romantic interest in a short-lived human companion might be something that just happens because the dragon feels like it. Alternatively, the dragon might also prefer elves and other long-lived species since they themselves are long-lived and thus could spend more time together or indeed grow old together with them. And perhaps the reason why elves are long-lived and magical in the first place is because they share more blood with the dragons and inherited more magical aspects than let's say humans. And perhaps the reason why lizardmen exist is because they inherited the more scaly aspects of a dragon's physique, winged sky-dwelling people, might be where they are, high up in the air, because their ancestors have procreated with dragons and thus inherited their wings, pyromancy, as a separate magical system, might have came from the ability of a dragon to breathe fire, and so on and so forth. So a dragon blood, just like the dragon themselves, might have a huge impact on any fantasy world, which would be befitting of such a mighty beast's blood. But even when a romantic interest is not at the forefront, which in many different cultures in our own day and age, and in our past, aren't either, but if the political aspects of such a union are the reason and motivation behind such offspring, the dragons might be interested in siring offspring with humans because they need, for lack of a better terms, a more human representative in order to rule over other humans. So a dragon siring offspring with a dozen women, resulting in hundreds of offspring, might simply be done because he wants a powerful noble elite that rules over the other humans in his name. I mean, he is just a single being. Even though he can fly, he can't be everywhere at once. He might have also trouble entering underground layers of rebellious dragon slayers, and he might not even be interested in ruling over his kingdom. He, for lack of a better term, could have an investor's mindset, and the only thing he cares about, about his nation-state company, is that he can get a lot of dividends out of it, and that it becomes more and more valuable. And these resources might not necessarily be gold and jewels for a dragon sword, but train casters, ballista operators, or mighty Vivan riders that can make up the foot soldiers of the dragon's or a dragon's horde's army. 
in order to better compete with his fellow dragons for resources and influence. And of course having an entire kingdom dedicated to feeding him and his kin might be something they immensely treasure. Simply because, just like humans, most dragons might want to seek a comfortable life. And the dragonborn themselves would also have the advantage that they are mighty and far longer lived than any normal human ruler. So instead of having to deal every 10 or 20 years with yet a new ruler, with yet a different name and personality, the dragon simply can deal his entire productive life with his own half-bloods, who given the blood ties would also be far more likely, far more loyal than any human, if nothing else, simply because they themselves in turn would be rulers, as in dukes or lords in their own right. Sure, they will never be a king, but being a prince with dragon blood inside of their vein, granting them all manners of powers, would be something that many normal humans could only dream of. So these are at least in my opinion two very prevailing causes of why dragons would sire offspring with humans and elves and orcs and any other humanoid creature. And next time we will take a closer look at what impact this union will have on the human society, for we will discuss the Skyrim protagonist, the legendary dragonborn and anybody else with dragon blood or dragon aspects on them. But for today, that's it. And now it's your turn. What do you think about the dragon's motivation to sire offspring with humans? Let me know it down in the comment section. And while you type, I say thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.